Hi, my name is Julia Callan. I'm one of the paediatric dietitians in Avonbrook's Hospital. In order to understand how we can use food to care in the children's hospital, it's important to look at what role food and nutrition plays within the child's hospital stay and how this aligns with the Trust's agreed nutrition specification for children. Both under and over nutrition can have early and serious consequences in children. Under nutrition can lead to a slowing of growth, increased susceptibility to infection, impaired neurodevelopment and an increased length of hospital stay. While excess energy intake coupled with low physical activity can lead to obesity. In addition, children cannot withstand starvation as long as adults due to their high rates of energy expenditure and relatively lower energy stores. We need to be able to cater for any child who comes through the door into the hospital. This can be the baby who's just started their first taste of food all the way up to the adolescent who is constantly hungry and has the highest calorie requirements they will ever have in their lifetime. Within this wide range of, of children, unlike adults who have set nutritional energy requirements, there's a huge range of requirements of age, body weight, underlying diagnosis and reason for admission. Physical health wards that are speciality based will all have to have a food provision service capable of accommodating this wide range of requirements. There are three principal areas, the otherwise well child, the child who has a need for a dietary therapeutic intervention, for example, celiac disease, food allergy, diabetes, texture modified diet, and the child who's unable to meet their energy requirements through conventional eating and drinking. The third group relates to a children who are in receipt of artificial nutrition support, either enterally or parenterally, who often also eat, but is outside the remit of this presentation. It's the second group, the child requiring therapeutic intervention, that's going to form the basis of the other presentations that you will see. This ranges from single food exclusions and the impact on nutritional status, therapies that require manipulation of macronutrient provision, for example, carbohydrate counting for diabetes or matching enzyme replacement dosage with the fat content of food in children with cystic fibrosis, to highly prescriptive dietary interventions as seen in metabolic conditions and those used in the treatment for epilepsy. For a child, a stay in hospital is a break with routine that can be disruptive to normal eating patterns and can often result in children needing to be tempted to eat. The attempt to impose a healthy diet upon a sick child can be futile and even counterproductive. For if such an imposition leads to an inadequate intake, then prolonged ill health and length of stay can result. However, it must be recognised that for some children, a diet based on a healthy eating principles may be appropriate, particularly if they are at risk of obesity or if length of stay is short. The primary objective, therefore, for the provision of food for children in hospital must be to ensure that they are able to eat sufficient move, move, food to meet their nutritional needs as soon as possible after admission, following surgical procedures or during treatment. Underpinning all of these factors influencing nutritional intake and requirements in hospital is a series of recommendations and guidelines for hospital's food services for children. These detail standards and recommendations for minimum nutrient provision for children and provided hospital food. Any food provision will need to encompass not only the cultural and religious needs of the community served, but also meet the nutritional requirements of local, regional and supra-regional services for children with multiple pathologies and high acuity needs. Many of these children will have complex requirements for nutrition support and therapeutic dietary provision. The service will be designed to meet the needs of the patient whilst educating and developing skills in patients and families to support nutritional well-being now and in the future. Thank you.